I think the biggest difference between influencers today and affiliates from the 90s was that affiliates had a blog and they didn't really know their readers. So they didn't really care as much. Uh, whereas influencers, they're on social media. They engage very actively in the comments. They read those comments all day long. So for them, the audience is really important. Welcome to Honest E-Commerce, where we are dedicated to cutting through the BS and finding actionable advice for online store owners. I'm your host, Chase Clymer. And I'm your host, Annette Grant. And we believe running an online business does not have to be complicated or a guessing game. If you are struggling to scaling your sales, Electric Eye is here to help. To apply to work with us, visit electriceye.io slash connect to learn more. And let's get on with the show. On today's episode of Honest E-Commerce, we welcome Shibo from Refersion as he discusses influencer marketing and how to build that program within your business. Welcome back. We're, this is take two. I lost the original of this podcast. <laughs> I will go, be Chase. completely honest. So <laughs> I'm sitting next to third chair trumpeter, Annette Grant. <laughs> and today we welcome back, but you've never heard it, uh, Shibo <laughs> from Refersion. Uh, I lost the first recording into cyberspace. I don't know where it is, but Shibo, welcome back. Hi, Shibo. I, act- I actually deleted it because I wanted to talk to you again. So <laughs> don't talk <laughs> I'm always glad to talk to you guys. So um, thanks for inviting me back. This is exciting. Yeah. So they actually had me out in New York speaking at their event. And I, I let Shibo know in front of only 150 people that I lost the podcast. <laughs> that, that was fun. That was a good message delivery. And I couldn't get angry with that. Yeah, you can't get angry when I do it on stage. So that's that's great. So no, all right. So let's, yeah, let's get into it. So Shibo is uh, second in command at Refersion. Uh, Refersion is a sponsor of our meetup here in Columbus. They're a fantastic application that helps with your affiliate marketing. Uh, but this isn't going to be salesy about their app. It's actually going to be all about affiliate marketing and how to best mm-hmm. kind of set yourself up for success with something mm-hmm. like that. Uh, that's a great strategy to have within your business. And people ask us all the time about it. And before I say, like, let's use these apps, it's like, all right, what system, what's your process? How are you going to best utilize affiliate marketing within your business? So with that being said, let's kind of take it back though. What makes you such an expert at affiliate marketing? And even before you ended up at Refersion, uh, what were you doing? And what's kind of your history in marketing and sales and in this tech space? Sure. Yeah. So... Um, I actually started my tech career in college. I ran a startup in in college um, and got an investor. And this was like way before the time of like VC capital. And Facebook was like my main competitor at the time because they were still so small. Uh, and it was like a social media thing. Uh, and through that, um, through that investor, I kind of like jumped into tech. So after college, uh, my app and my my company wasn't making any money. So I joined the investors uh, boutique consulting firm called Huge. Um, and so we through Huge, I walked around uh, and, and did projects in New York, LA, uh, and some in Europe and Asia as well. And I was really helping merchants and companies build digital products and figure out like, okay, how do we kind of translate like, let's say a CNN.com or Target um, into like a, a new modern brand that can that can help um, kind of boost their sales and make them more relevant. Uh, so through Huge, I got a lot of good experience building websites, digital products. After that, I kind of wanted to start building things on my own. I wanted to kind of work on a product and kind of work on the same thing every day instead of jumping between clients. Uh, so what I ended up doing was meeting Alex um, very, very randomly at a meetup. And he told me about this Refersion app. And the first thing we did was like build out an onboarding guide, an onboarding experience, so that it's easier to integrate our software. And we saw our, like integrations rise by like three x within like a month or two. And we thought, okay, there's something here. And we just kind of started digging a little further. Uh, so I I kind of come into this space with uh, a lot of experience in building products, building great products, and looking at the data, making sure that we solve some of the core issues um, that this space needs, and then. I kind of fell into the affiliate space. So we kind of look at things a little differently um, here at Refersion. Let's talk to our audience though. Let's peel it back a little bit and just define affiliate marketing. Because I I do think um, affiliate marketing has been on the rise with social media and social media influencers. So let's define what affiliate marketing is and then walk through 
the process of how, how people become affiliates? Let's just kind of like start at, at base zero with, with affiliate marketing. Sure, sure. So affiliate marketing is essentially like word of mouth marketing on the internet. It's whenever like you see something uh, on a blog that you follow or a YouTube channel and they mention, hey, um, go to Skillshare and use our coupon to you know learn something new. Anytime that happens, that kind of referral marketing, that's pretty much in essence referral mar- uh, affiliate marketing. On the technical perspective, essentially what we're doing is that we're embedding you know artifacts and data artifacts into the user's browser uh, or storing coupon codes on our side. And then we're matching all the data back. Say, okay, of the thousands and millions of orders you get every day or every month or every year, which of these orders came back from a referral? Um, so a YouTube person, an influencer, uh, or like a blogger. And how much commission do you owe them? And this commission might be variable based on uh, what their size of the audience is, how how much you really want to work with them. Uh, so, for example, a YouTuber with like millions of subscribers might command a higher commission rate from your brand than, say, you know, a lot of micro influencers who just kind of want to be brand ambassadors and want to kind of work with your brand and get a sense of um, it, kind of feel closer to to your product and, and your company. You said quite a few terms there that I want to highlight. So you were saying referrals, brand ambassadors, affiliate marketing. Influencers, micro influencers. Yeah, so like all these words getting thrown around probably confuse everyone. Then they're like, "I need an influencer yeah. program. I need, uh, I need to do a brand ambassador program." It's all the same thing. It's, but they do have different, you know, they do have different, I guess, titles for what the programs are called. Yeah. But that's definitely a more specific to your industry. But at the end of the day, it is the exact same thing. You're having someone else use their presence, their clout to drive traffic to your website. And you can call it whatever you want. Some people think affiliate marketing is a dirty term, but it's the same exact thing as a brand ambassador. Like It's the same exact thing as... you know, you're, When you get kind of close to this multi-level marketing stuff, it's like the same stuff. Use your friends to yeah, sell your yeah. stuff. You know, It's not as dirty as that, but like it's you know, brand yeah. ambassadors, referrals. It's affiliate marketing. Yeah, I'm glad you brought up multi-level marketing because you know we actually have a very strong litmus test at Refersion for when we look at an, a network and what the merchant's trying to do uh, to see if it's an L- MLM system or a pure referral affiliate system. MLM systems will get you in hot water um, with some of the regulations. So we try really hard not to do those and, and we don't. So the, the litmus test we have internally is are, are the people who are promoting your things, what they're promoting, is it a product or an opportunity? If it's a product like a something solid, you can buy it. That's great. If it's an opportunity, so you know the opportunity to sell a product, the opportunity to buy into a product, the opportunity to you know get more people underneath you. That's when we kind of draw a line and say, nope, that's not a network we can support. That's fantastic to show that you guys are fitting the bill here at Honesty Commerce. You you like things to be above board, and you like it to be a real business as opposed to you know not. <laughs> so histor- <laughs> so historically, how would businesses track affiliate marketing before apps like Refersion? Would it be coupon codes and then they'd manually have to see how many times it was used that year? Like, I- Obviously, you guys are s- solving a huge pain point. I'm just trying to think of w- historically, how would people track this prior, prior to an app? Yeah, yeah. So historically... Um... This tracking happened in many different ways, but most common was through a referral link. Um, and the best way to think about it is kind of like a unique Google Analytics tag um, that is assigned to an affiliate or a referrer or a promoter, uh, whoever, whoever that person is. Um, and then anytime somebody clicks that link, there is a little bit of data that gets embedded in the browser. And then on the checkout, uh, the app basically checks again if this uh, data exists. If it does, it creates what's called a conversion or like a referral order uh, and creates that credit for the affiliate. Uh, so this is largely how it's been happening since the 90s. Um, you know, since then, we've had new technologies and we've moved away from like sometimes using cookies. Uh, now we're using local storage, which is a, kind of a more standardized way of storing data within the user's browser. But, but largely, those are technology changes. Uh, the fundamentals of kind of like embedding and a little bit of data and then reading that data back to kind of create a credit um, is like the fundament of the, of the technology. 
Hey, if you're in the product making business, then we've got great news for you. Katana is here to make your life easier. There's now a Shopify app built and designed for merchants that make their own products. Manage your sales, orders, raw materials, production schedule, inventory, and material purchasing all from one dashboard. The name of that app is Katana. K-A-T-A-N-A. Katana is designed for makers, crafters, and small manufacturers selling on Shopify. Until now, product makers selling on e-commerce have had to settle with messy spreadsheets or regular inventory management software. We know they both usually suck if you need to make your own products. Fortunately, Katana is built from ground up with the needs of a small manufacturer in mind. Production scheduling and inventory management has never been this easy for Shopify merchants. A recent survey shows that 93% of Katana's users say they love it because of the ease of the setup and how intuitive it is. To try Katana for free, sign up at www.katanamrp.com. That's K-A-T-A-N-A-M-R-P.com. Or search Katana on the Shopify App Store. There's a 14-day free trial. You do not need a credit card. And when you're signing up, use the promo code HONEST to get 30% off your first three months of a paid subscription. Check out Katana today. Can you talk to us and our listeners about the, the businesses that you've seen the most success with affiliate programs? Like what type of product you've seen that's, that's, mm, on, the ri- yes. that's on the rise or just they've had the most you know, success historically. Let's talk to our listeners like what kind of store they might have that be interested in an affiliate program. And maybe why they had the success. If it isn't like a product or industry, it's just the why. The implementation of their affiliate program or something like that. If they had a diehard you know, brand crowd. Sure. Yeah, I mean, it's a good question. Like, we get that question a lot. Like, what works in our industry? What makes sense for us? What kind of program should we run? I, I don't know if it's good or bad. And I have to say that looking at the data, and we really look at this data and we try to figure it out because we try to figure out, okay, how do we target this person? How do we build a good plan for this industry and vertical? What we find is that there's actually very little consistency. We have jewelry companies that have very low cost jewelry uh, and very high margins run affiliate programs completely different ways. Some of them would run a very big brand ambassador program with hundreds of thousands of affiliates or brand ambassadors. And their goal is to like almost like boil the ocean with these um, influencers or who are interested. We'll just try to com- promote them and um, get them to start promoting that first sale or motivating that first sale from their friends. While as others have this very, very you know s- small curated network of bloggers or influencers and they don't let the program they don't let anybody else know about the program and they are very secretive and these are very exclusive high commission deals um, with some of these bloggers and youtube influencers and i've seen everything in between as well and so it really depends on what you think makes sense for your brand and your audience especially if it's a visual product let's say clothing shoes um even makeup makeup works very well on youtube because it's instructional um, but clothing works very well on Instagram. And those are some of the overall high level kind of dated guides we've seen. And then aside from that, how you want to build that network of Instagram influencers, whether you want to work with a lot of small ones or very few big ones or something in between, it's kind of up to you. And based on kind of the opportunities given to your brand, sometimes, you know, one of the things I always tell merchants is if you want to start with affiliate marketing or start kind of working through this referral marketing process, Look at your customer list. You might actually have a few big influencers already buying from you. Um, and all you need to do is just kind of offer them, hey, would you like to you know, do a post about my product? Would you like to get a free sample to do like a, like a review for it? And I will give you a little commission on that if for every order that you know, your, your post or your product, your, your post drives for us. Uh, so that's a good way to kind of start and start like seeing what opportunities are already open to your brand um, to, to start with referral and affiliate marketing. Awesome. So let's talk about that. Starting your affiliate referral, brand ambassador, whatever you want to call it. Starting that program within your business. So what are like the top things you need to get locked and loaded before you have those conversations? Before you even start reaching out to influencers or whatever you want to call them, what do I need to have written down and have... What's my plan? What do I need to have? Yeah, because I'm going to be honest from a store owner's perspective. I'm sitting here. I know I have diehard customers that like they they love our gym, they love our product, but I'm like, oh, this sounds like I know I should be in the affiliate referral, like doing that for the business. And honestly, I'm sitting here overwhelmed. I'm like, I just don't even know where I start. And then now I'm going to have to be dealing with these affiliates. And I'm just like, 
uh, do I want to do it? So that's I, I'm very interested yeah. in this in this answer because it feels extremely overwhelming to be honest. Because it seems like a whole new arm of the business that could be extremely profitable, but also I'm bringing in people. <laughs> so yeah. that, that's yeah. what yeah. makes me nervous. People are scary. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Especially when it comes think- to like money and like, oh my gosh, how am I gonna how am I gonna do this? How am I gonna make sure everyone's getting paid? And is it gonna be worth it? How are they gonna represent the brand? Is it, are they gonna represent the brand the way that I want them to? Yeah, yeah, and those are all very, very valid concerns. Um, it's just kind of like a step by step process to try to, you know, alleviate each of those risks. So, in terms of like a checklist, the first thing I would try to figure out is I like to, personally, I always like to start with numbers. Uh, I like to know what is the um, what is the maximum conversion I can like off, offer I can give to them. What's the maximum commission I can give to them, and what's the minimum. Um, that I think will be enticing for them. And then I try to find somewhere in, b- in between. Or if I'm just starting, I would just start with the minimum uh, and then try to build my way up. And you, how you find your margin right, is kind of like, okay, what's the percentage and what's the offer I can give to the affiliate? That's going to be the main incentive. Does some, so some things that you might want to think about in this, during this step is, uh, are some of your products higher commission than others? Uh, are some of your products, you know, uh, lower commission than others because of margins? Like a bracelet might not be, right? It might not give commission, same commission as like a sticker, for example. So once you have your numbers and you have a sense of like what that gap is and what you can offer to the affiliate, uh, the next thing I would do is start kind of researching some of the profiles of your customers and figuring out what their influencers are um, or who their influencers are. And that can happen in many different ways. Uh, one of the ways, I, like I suggested, is by just looking at your customer list and seeing if any of them are influencers in them, of themselves already. Um, and that is a pretty good guide to say, okay, this is this influencer is probably um, a good target audience, uh, target customer because he's already a customer. So we're just going to find more people like him or people in his audience just to just to start and to give it a try. Uh, another way is just to see people who are popular in your community. Um, you know, for example. Uh, one, one case study I can show, I can talk about is, uh, I think a pet company in order to kind of start building affiliates and influencers, they actually went, reached out to all the animal shelters and made each animal shelter a affiliate inside their program so that they have these affiliations, uh, and that the animal shelter can promote their products, uh, and get some money back. Um, and so it was a very uh, virtuous cycle, uh, for the brand. So any sort of like, you know, local establishments, and they don't have to be people, they can be trainers, they can be people of another small business, they can be another business in your vertical, just figuring out who would be possible affiliates in your, in your vertical, uh, or who influences customers in your vertical is, is the next step and kind of profiling who you want to target. And then finally, I would just say, write the email, get that email written, uh, hey, my name is X. I am here to do Y. Maybe you've heard of my brand. Maybe you've heard of my product. Um, I'm very interested in working with you and I'm willing to offer you uh, whatever the number you figured out in the first step is. So make it a very friendly, direct email. Um, reach out to them in Instagram DMs. Reach out to them in, um, on Twitter. You know, Any sort of personal kind of way to get that message across. Uh, because the first affiliates you work with are going to be very personal. They're going to need some support. They're going to need to learn how to sell your product. They need to get some marketing messages from you. And the best to do that is just engaging with you as the brand owner. So the first thing to do is just you know get get those numbers, then figure out who you're targeting, and then just send out the emails and start that relationship. That's fantastic. So when talking with these these new influencers that I'm trying to bring into the flo- the fold for my business. You know, I guess I'm going to just answer this question myself. As I see a lot of people doing influencer marketing, and they're saying, Hey, I want you to be an influencer. Here's a big code for you to buy something from me. And then you can use that thing to then promote for me. And the statement is all asked. You're not giving anything away. So I feel like if you're trying to go to somebody for a favor, you're trying to have someone help you you need to go and give them something first. And I do this all the time when I'm trying to meet new people, get to people on the podcast. It's I go to them with value straight up the rip and I don't ask for anything in return. And that's how you should do it for influencers. You should go to somebody with your hand out and be like, Hey, I want to give you this product. No, There's no questions about it. Like, I want to give you this product. That's that. If you like it, I would like to talk to you about doing some influencer stuff with me. Because when you go the other way around, it's like, Hey, here's a coupon code and buy something from me. 
you know, you're asking for them to give you money before you even, like that's just setting it up on the wrong foot and it's going to be a terrible engagement. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? You have to be willing yeah. to invest in this person for have that person invest their, you know, obviously their audience that they've curated. You need to make sure that you're not like being, I don't know, saturating that market. It's not the right term. What am I trying to say here, Annette? You want me to read your mind? Yeah, that's, that's probably a, a bad big problem. <laughs> <laughs> like these people have worked hard to build up their networks. You know, it's why you're approaching them yeah. as an influencer. And if you go to them and ask them to do something for you without giving them anything in return, like they're not going to want to work with you and they're not going to promote your brand to the audience that they've worked so hard to build. That's a really good point, just because, you know, I think the biggest difference between influencers today and affiliates from the 90s was that affiliates had a blog and they didn't really know their readers. So they didn't really care as much. Uh, whereas influencers, they're on social media. They engage very actively in the comments. They read those comments all day long. So for them, the audience is really important. So respecting them and respecting their audience really can get you ahead working when working with influencers. Was I loot the word that you were looking for? Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I think especially what Chase is saying, like they don't, they have their own personal brand, so they don't want to dilute it by bringing on brands that don't mesh with what their their message is. And so, I think one of the things too, like when I'm just thinking about this influencer or affiliate program for myself, is I would probably start very small with like micro influencers, um, and not even I hate even using these terms, but someone that's very uh, I. If I do this, I want to start with someone that I almost personally know because I they're that close to the brand, and I think getting their feedback before trying to like conquer someone that has more followers. And honestly, I think everybody knows right now that like there's a lot of vanity vanity numbers out there that it might be worthwhile to go with um, someone that has a smaller following. They're much more engaged, and their their audience isn't used to them promoting. Um, promoting lots of products post after post. Because I know myself, now that I'm looking on social media and someone someone has something in their post, I know they're they're making money off of it. So I don't know how genuine it is anymore. It's, it is getting very diluted, Chase. Awesome. So now that we've gone down that rabbit hole of... you know, It's essentially just... If you're going to ask for something from somebody, make sure that you give them something first. That's what we're trying to say. But moving beyond that, getting back to uh, affiliate marketing and reversion itself, so what are some of the perks of using an app such as Refersion? Yeah. Uh, so Refersion is really good at helping you organize and segment your affiliate network. So um, I mentioned you know, having different offers or having different commission rates per your affiliates, uh, having different rates uh, based on who you're working with. So Refersion helps make that very simple. We have a concept of offers that can uh, basically house both a registration page and have unlimited offers and affiliates per offer. So that way you can really segment your, your affiliate network into different groups of you know, high commission, low commission, medium commission. And then also see which offer and which commission rates are performing very well. Communicate directly with the top guys to figure out what they're doing and then try to you know, move some of that um, strategies across the network. So we try to make everything very simple, uh, starting from setting up and integrating our software with your store all the way to you know, getting your affiliate registration page up and launching that first affiliate program and giving the affiliate dashboards that they can use to both promote and track their progress. Do you help with payment, the payment processing for the affiliates? Because that's the other thing that is scary to me is making sure that everybody's mm-hmm. paid and paid what, what's due to them. Yeah. So we calculate all of that uh, and we tell you, okay, this conversion came in and you can set that conversion to be approved, denied, uh, because you know sometimes products get returned. Uh, affiliates are used to getting paid maybe 30 days or 45 days after the initial purchase. Okay. Uh, so that's, that's okay. That's normal in, in the industry. Um, once you kind of have those kind of conversions approved, we then schedule them for payment in the system. And you can pay out via PayPal, which is a pretty valid and safe way to pay out because PayPal is the payee. PayPal, if I think you transfer more than like $20,000 to PayPal, they will automatically send the affiliate a 1099. So that tax portion is covered as well. So for emergencies getting started, PayPal is great. Um, you can also kind of create gift cards within your into your store and then send them to affiliates as a store credit system. Uh, and finally, we also have Refersion Pay. So we've just launched a feature where we can help pay affiliates on the behalf of the merchant uh, for a service fee. So we'll give you an invoice, 
you pay the invoice and the fees associated, um, and then we'll route the, the money to the affiliates directly. Support for our podcast comes from our friends at Simpler, a new way to staff 24-7 sales and customer service on your e-commerce store. It works with your existing email and chat platforms, so setup is quick and easy. Simpler's network of on-demand, US-based Simpler specialists are standing by to answer your customers' most common questions. Set it up for free today and then turn it on or off depending on your customer volume. You only pay $2.25 for every resolution. No hidden fees, contracts, or minimums. Close more sales with Simpler by staffing your email and live chat around the clock with Simpler Specialists. Start your free seven-day trial at simpler.ai slash honest. That's S-I-M-P-L-R dot A-I slash honest. You just brought up an interesting point that I've never even thought of. um, Is the payment via your own product back to the influencer. That's a really genius idea. If you don't feel like you can warrant you know, paying them directly yet, that's a way to, to weave them in even tighter into your brand. Do you see that being used often? Yeah. Yeah. I've seen a few merchants um, kind of use it. I actually... There was, there was one merchant who, who did it in a very smart way. Uh, I'm going to share this case study. So basically, what they do is that they only pay out in $25 gift cards. Uh, and... That's really strange. It's like instead of giving you like a five hundred dollar gift card, they'll give you like you know like twenty twenty five dollar gift cards. Um, and it's weird. Why would you do that? And the reason is because on checkout, only one gift card can be applied. So basically, they're saying you can have twenty five dollars off anything, any total order in the store, uh, but, but you can't you know reuse more than one gift card at a time. Mm-hmm. So this way, it actually spread the gift cards around to more people. Um, people kind of share in and actually help grow their affiliate network a lot. That's some interesting uh, tactics in my eyes, but it's smart. It's smart because then people can give those away as gifts and it's still payment. So, well, I'll just to say with the getting store credit type situation with selling your products, and it, when you go to an influencer, they more than likely are going to be a fan of your product, especially when you're younger, a younger getting started with this program. You know, anyone that's going to talk about you obviously likes what you guys are doing. So offering them maybe a higher commission with store credit versus a lower commission and a cashback reward and let them choose their own ending. Uh, that's a way to kind of navigate those offers with trying to build out your first couple affiliates. Yeah. Yeah. That's a very good point. I think different audience types, different personalities, different personas of your affiliate network are going to require um, different commission payment types. Um, you know, sometimes if you get a big deal with an influencer that's very well established, there's no way they would accept store credit because it's just you know how they pay their bills. Uh, they can't pay their bills with store credit. So, um, so I think it really has to do with like the level of affiliate or the level of um, professionalism the influencer has. Um, but yes, I've seen a lot of micro influencers, brand ambassadors getting paid by either with product or uh, store credit. Absolutely. I mean, there's. A million ways to build this program and build the commission structures. And that's what we're trying to make you think about before you kind of go down and build this for yourself. Like you got to have all the answers before you start the system. Refersion isn't going to build that for you. Um, You need to have all that in place beforehand. And then you can use apps like Refersion. And there's others in the marketplaces that do similar stuff. You know, there's strengths with every app that's out there. But just know that before you can use an app, you got to have a plan. And I think also you can start really, really small. You don't even need the app in the beginning. You know, you can just start with your the people that you know already support the brand and do smaller level stuff for them. But so having some sort of affiliate program in place is very smart. And don't don't get overwhelmed. Like I was getting overwhelmed myself, but I know, just listening to to our conversation, uh, I think everyone should have a program in place, whatever that is, including myself, even if it starts at a really small level and then build mm-hmm. build upon that. So, yeah, some of the most successful small affiliate programs I've seen are starting to run on Google Google Sheets. You know, just tracking a few coupon codes, looking up which coupon codes led to which orders, and then just manually paying out the affiliate via PayPal. Awesome. That I think that's a great place for us to kind of wrap up to let letting everybody know just to get started on it. But are there any resources that you have that our listeners, either maybe your site with some blog posts that they could take a look at if they're interested in getting started with an affiliate program? Some resources. Yeah, for sure. Um, on our blog post, uh, our blog, we 
have a lot of blog articles about how to find influencers, how to work with influencers on, on Facebook, and how to um, work with influencers on Instagram. So you can check that out at blog.refersion.com. And then on refersion.com, we also have a learn page. So on that page, we feature articles as well as videos about our software. So you can learn a little more about what our software does and how to get into affiliate marketing. Cool. And then I know this uh, because you guys have been a sponsor for so long. If you go to refersion.com and sign up for an account, there's somewhere there's a coupon code. We're not an affiliate, but we actually pass the uh, discount on to you. I think it's either uh, Electric Eye or Honest Ecommerce. I think they both work, uh, but I'll make sure to put that in the show notes. I, I have one last comment and we kind of just like jumped over it really quickly here. I know that you met your partner at a meetup, correct? Yep. And Chase and I, we host a meetup. And I just want to encourage all of our listeners, find some sort of meetup in your town. The face-to-face still works. You can find rad people to work with, whether it's starting a business, starting a store, letting them help you with your store. So really look at the meetup app and, and take a look at it. You can build some really strong bonds, if not careers and businesses <laughs> like you, correct? You never yeah. went, you never yeah, went back to that sure. meetup, right? It was a one and done. You found your partner. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Me and him, actually, we talked about it. Neither of us ever went back to that meetup, but we kept talking. Yeah, it's awesome. So so please, listeners, find a meetup in your town and, and hit it up. You can find some some cool connections there for sure. Awesome. Well, Shibo, I promise not to delete this one. And I can't wait to see you when I'm back in New York. Thanks. Can't wait to see you guys as well. Awesome. Thanks for having me. Again. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Have a good one. Bye. We can't thank our guests enough for coming on the show and sharing the truth. Links and more will be available in the show notes. If you found any actionable advice in this podcast that you'd like to apply to your business, please reach out at electriceye.io slash connect. Please make sure to subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or your podcast app of choice. 